the government has got various schemes uh, to help uh, those who have been hit during this period. This is expected to be a protracted uh, situation. Is the government prepared to support more and for longer? Yes. The pandemic uh, is not just a public health threat. It has a long tail in terms of the economic impact it will have. And its impact on lower income Singaporeans and on vulnerable households uh, will be magnified because people from uh, low-income households may have less savings, uh, they may have a sole breadwinner, uh, they may have uh, less resources and less connections that will enable them to uh, sail through uh, choppy waters. Uh, and therefore, we are extremely concerned about the impact on low-income households. Uh, but broader than that, you see the uh, uh, pandemic affecting even households that all this while have been fairly stable and have been able to manage all this while. Uh, say, husband and wife, uh, both PMETs, because of the sector they're in being severely impacted, uh, they may suddenly find that uh, they've lost all their income. And so our support during this pandemic, uh, both for the here and now and possibly for the longer term, must address both the needs of the vulnerable for whom the challenges will be magnified and exacerbated, but also the impact on the broader segment of Singaporeans who, until now, uh, have been able to be self-reliant, but who will need a lot more support, both directly to them, as well as indirectly through their employers, in order to keep uh, their jobs. Let me give an example. Almost 600,000 people applied for the Temporary Relief Fund. That's a big group of people. How, for how long can we sustain prolonged support for what seems to be a growing group of people? Yes, the uh, economic fallout from the pandemic uh, has been severe and it will be protracted. The Temporary Relief Fund had uh, 450,000 people uh, who received that support. Uh, and that is really a reflection of the economic distress to people and to jobs. Uh, following the Temporary Relief Fund, we have the COVID-19 Support Grant, which supports employees who have lost their jobs or, or have lost income, uh, as well as the Self-Employed Income Relief Scheme, or SERS, which supports uh, self-employed persons who, during a situation like this, are likely to be severely impacted as well. So both supporting employees as well as self-employed persons and enabling them during this period to have some financial support. But ultimately, these buttress the main strategy which the government is pushing on, which is helping people to keep jobs and helping people to find jobs. And uh, uh, the job support scheme, which over four budgets now totals more than $23.5 billion, right, uh, help to enable employers uh, to keep local workers uh, by supporting the wages that they have to pay to their workers uh, at this depressed time. Uh, and to enable these employers to use government grants to train their workers in the meantime. Now this is taken up from the playbook of the global economic crisis. Uh, help employers keep Singaporean workers at their jobs. And that is actually the most important priority. And for those who have been uh, impacted and have lost their jobs, and in the first quarter of this year, some 3,200 people have lost their jobs through retrenchment, uh, largely as a result of the crisis, as well as young Singaporeans graduating from school, ITE, Poly, University, uh, for whom the economic outlook has turned dark overnight. Uh, the National uh, Job Council's commitment uh, is to work with the public and private sector to create 100,000 jobs as well as traineeship positions in order to give people that sense of dignity through work and the sense that, well, it's a crisis, it's hard to get a job, but I have a traineeship position where I pick up useful skills. Even as you pay me to, to pick up those skills or to pay me to undergo training, I am strengthening my skill set so that when, uh, when the sun rises again, when the clouds disappear, uh, and when jobs and opportunities return uh, to Singapore and, and hopefully the rest of the world, that we'll be able to then transition to those jobs. We have had to dip into reserves. Significantly. Yes. Um, some people may be worried. With prolonged support, will that mean that we need to dip into reserves again? Yes. Uh, the reserves uh, 
the reserves have enabled us during this very uncertain time, uh, and the duration of which you know, is, is uncertain, to provide support to people to stay at work and for those who have lost their jobs to be supported uh, in the short term, mid term and if necessary in the longer term. But we need to make sure that we keep the spirit of Singapore together. A sense that, well, I need help, but I'd rather get help to get a job or get help to pick up skills so that I can support my family. Certainly, we need to provide financial assistance, but actually, if you speak to many people, they would prefer if you, you give them the, the ability to earn a living to support their families. And that is the way, by dipping into our reserves, to enable jobs to be preserved and for us to position Singaporean workers for the upturn. How do we balance between welfareism, if you like, and helping Singaporeans get through these extraordinarily difficult times? Yes, we certainly must incentivize people uh, to, to work. And uh, if you look at the COVID-19 support grant, it's financial assistance over three months, but it comes with job assistance as well as training opportunities. So in a way it is, if you like to call it welfare, but it's financial assistance, but it also comes with a gateway to picking up a job or picking up skills again. So in a way, both jobs and financial support are interlinked. In fact, this has been the DNA of our social support system all this while. If you look at the Comcare assistance, short and medium term assistance, which has been around for quite some time, for low income households uh, who have difficulty meeting their basic needs, they get financial assistance, they get help with their housing rental, they get help with the utilities, they get help with their health care. But tied into that is support for them to go back to work or pick up skill sets. MSF has tried very, very hard to streamline the processes for application for some of these relief funds. And yet at the same time, online chatter shows that you know, some people were not able to get their uh, applications through and there were also reported cases of abuse. What is your takeaway? Any lessons learned or personal takeaways from this episode? Yes, we want to give help and we want to give help quickly. But uh, as, a, as a government, we are responsible and need to be good stewards of public resources. Uh, and that is a, a general principle. But at a time of significant uncertainty, we have to be very good stewards of these scarce resources because we do not know how long this crisis will last. And so for the Temporary Relief Fund, we have made it as flexible as we can. Uh, not just requiring official documents, but my officers will look at uh, emails, look at WhatsApp messages, look at apps that uh, indicate how much earnings have been collected. And for those who have difficulty providing documents, a declaration will do. So on the one hand, we have made the scheme flexible and quick. But on the other hand, we fully expected that some people would want to exploit the opportunity. Uh, and, uh, and I think through that, uh, they have... Uh, delayed the support that people who genuinely needed it would get. And so we have to strike that right balance.